This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll be showing you how to build a Jeep winch cover, and we're gonna be showing you how to build it on this 85 Toyota Land Cruiser HJ60. This Land Cruiser was imported from New Zealand via a company in Connecticut. It was going to be used for missionaries to Africa. They fixed it up, but didn't take it after all. We'll be building this winch cover out of supplies that you can purchase from Sailrite. This is a Shelterite 18 ounce vinyl and it has three buckles to hold it in place. It'll look great. Let's get started and show you how it's made. Because this winch has a lot of shape, we're going to use strapping tape to determine a baseline in determining the contour shape of the winch meaning the tape will determine how many panels of fabric will be required for a finished cover to fit snugly over the object. This patterning principle is the same for any object, whether a Jeep cover, grill cover, binnacle cover, and so on. If you desire a cover which is form-fitting to a contoured object, this patterning technique is required. And just place the strapping tape everywhere she wants a panel to be created. And our particular winch calls for five panels. These are the first two panels. Then on the other side, these are the other two. And the last one being the cover that wraps all the way around the winch. Here's a look ahead at those five patterns. But first we need to show you how to make the pattern. So let's show you that next. Now that the baseline is taped to our winch, we can take some measurements to determine how large to cut the pattern material to size to fit on top of the winch. The cover that wraps around the winch is 44 inches, however, we're going to add a few extra inches to that. No reason to go short there. And we also want to add a half inch to any of the edges that will be seamed together. So even though our cover was 9 inches wide, we're going to cut its width to 10 inches, adding a half inch to each side for seam allowance. The DuraScrim pattern material makes a great patterning material because it has a scrim running in the middle of it to help keep it from stretching if it were pulled tight. We're going to place the DuraScrim pattern material over top of the winch and around the back of the winch. Perfect. Because the side piece is not a rectangle and has a little bit of shape built into it, we're going to take some general measurements here to determine how large to cut our pattern material to fit that side piece. Then we're going to cut it down to size once we've taped it onto the uh, winch and the existing top cover. Strike some marks or lines on the pattern material to indicate where you want to cut the material to size to fit the uh, strapping tape that was placed on the winch earlier. Now we can cut this pattern material to the size that is required for this piece. It looks like it'll be about a perfect fit. Now we'll use that strapping tape and tape this pattern piece to our top piece that we wrapped around the winch. We'll then follow that same procedure for the opposite side. We'll then take some measurements for the panel that will wrap around one of the sides of the winch. Uh, these are general measurements and we need enough material that will create a half inch seam anywhere panels are seamed together. So they'll overlay other panels by approximately a half inch. Angela's cutting the pattern material a little bit large so she can take it over to the winch and actually place marks on the pattern material to determine exactly the size to cut it. So here she's placing the pattern material around this portion of the winch and then she's going to use that sharpie marker to place marks that are actually overlaying the opposite panel by approximately a half inch. She's marked this forward edge, she'll cut that to size and then take it back over to the winch and continue to pattern that panel. To make it easier, she's going to place strapping tape along that edge she just cut and she's going to tape it to that front panel so that it makes it easier to mark and trim the remainder of that panel. 
She's overlaying it by approximately a half inch. That allows for the seam allowance. Once it's taped in place, she'll mark the remainder of the panel and then cut that to size as well. There's no need to be precise. This is a cover and we are making it a form-fitting cover. However, being precise is not necessary for a general cover. She'll continue to cut it to size, tape it in place, and continue cutting. Now the pattern material has been cut to size and taped in place. We're going to add a little bit of an arch to the bottom portion of this side cover. This will not be a separate panel. In other words, it will not be sewn onto this panel. It will just be added to this panel. So we're going to permanently tape it in place. She's uh, creating an arch with a Sharpie marker on top of the pattern material. And she's already taken measurements to determine how large she wants this arch to be. And she's permanently going to tape this onto that pattern material. So that pattern will have this shape added to the bottom portion to cover the winch more appropriately. Now that the one side is done and obviously the top piece, she's going to mark on the pattern material how much she wants to add for a hem. Along this top panel, she's going to add two inches for a hem, which is probably more than necessary, but it's a good idea. On the side panel, she's going to place a uh, add mark of one inch for a hem. However, anytime you create a hem with a lot of shape, uh, making the hem fairly large, it's harder for the hem to lay flat. So I think I would have added a half inch only to that side. Since the patterning we did on the other side is done exactly the same way as it would be on this side, we're going to show this in Fast Forward. Our patterning is now done. Now we can use this to cut out the fabric. Before you take apart the pattern material, it is always a good idea to mark it thoroughly so that you know what panel is what. Because as soon as you untape this for cutting out your material, you may get confused. So mark it up, right, left, outside, inside, upside down, right side up, whatever you need to make it clear. Now you can take apart the pattern material so that you can use it to pattern your actual fabric. Either remove the tape that was used to hold each panel to the opposite panel or fold it in half.
All right, now you see all five of the patterns. We're going to be using a Shelterite 18 ounce vinyl material to create our winch cover. This is a phenomenal material. It's like a truck tarp material, very abrasion resistant, waterproof, and UV resistant. We're using a yellow grease pencil that is available from Sailrite, which marks vinyl material exceptionally well. On the bottom edge of this pattern panel, she is adding the one inch for the hem allowance, which she's marked on the pattern material. I would prefer using a half inch rather than one inch. Notice also that she's measuring perpendicular to the uh, cut edge of the pattern material. That's important. If you do not measure perpendicular, your pattern will not be accurate. Now simply connect the dots or the lines and at any sharp corners you may want to take some leeway. That makes it easier to create the hem. We'll do this with each one of the pattern pieces that we cut out. Once all your pattern pieces are marked on the fabric, simply cut the fabric out with scissors. No reason to use a hot knife because this vinyl material does not unravel. We'll first start with panel 5, the long panel that wraps around the winch. We'll start by creating a 1 inch hem at the bottom edge of that panel. So Angela takes it to the Sayerite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system and sews a straight stitch along that edge securing that one inch hem in place. You'll notice at the beginning of her stitches and here at the end she reverses the sewing machine to lock the stitch in place. Now along the two long edges of that panel number five she's going to create a half inch hem all along the lengths of the two long sides. This panel is actually longer than it need be, so we're going to leave the other short end unhemmed. Next we'll be working with panel 3 and 4. Angela is going to sew panel 3 to panel 4 and be sure the outer surfaces are facing each other. Shelterite material has a shiny side and a non-shiny side. We're considering the non-shiny side the outside for our application. However, you could use either side for the outside surface. You notice here she started at the center of the panel and starts sewing approximately a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. At the bottom edge, she'll reverse to lock the stitch in place. Then she'll start at the corner of this assembly again and sew down the other direction. As she sews these two panels together, she's being careful to line up the raw edges so that they are even as she sews approximately a half inch from those raw edges. You'll notice that as she comes to the end, it's not quite even. That's completely normal. We'll do some trimming when we're done sewing these together to even up the edges. We'll use that yellow grease pencil and mark the bottom edge so that it's even with the opposite panel. Then we'll trim it to size with scissors. Now we'll follow that same procedure for panel 1 and 2. Again, Angela is not going to sew from the sides but from the center, so she's determining where this panel will sit on the opposite panel. And notice the outside surfaces are facing each other. This panel has a lot of shape, so notice how she sews. A half inch from the edge 
She matches up the edge as she sews, so she's going to pull this panel over top of the under panel as she sews. This may look difficult, but it's actually not that difficult. Just take your time. Now she'll start from that center location again and sew down the other side. For your information, we're using a Tanara thread. Tanara thread is totally UV proof, chemical resistant, and also fade proof. Other threads that are less expensive are V92 polyester, or if you're using a home sewing machine, a V69 polyester. Those threads are UV resistant, not UV proof. All threads can be purchased from Sailrite. If you have questions, give us a call. Once it's been sewn together, it is very easy to take it back to the sewing machine again if you're not happy and re-sew either on the outside of that stitch line or the inside. So this procedure is easy because everything is basically held in place. So Angela's decided to retake it over to the sewing machine and sew one more time basically on the inside of that previous stitch, making a new stitch line. Now she turns it right side out so she can inspect her seam. If she's not happy, she can take it over to the sewing machine and sew it again. As done previously, we'll trim off any edges that aren't flush with the opposite panels. Remember back when patterning, we marked for a one inch hem. Here we're going to create that hem along these panels where indicated. However, instead of creating a one inch hem, we're going to create a half inch hem because a one inch hem will find it more difficult to lay flat due to the shape of the panel. There's a lot of shape. So here Angela is creating a half inch hem and she's folding it to the inside surface of the panel and then sews around the perimeter of that hem. We're going to show this in double time. Notice that there are a few wrinkles in the hem. That's quite acceptable because those wrinkles are on the inside of the cover. They will not be noticeable on the outside of the cover. If you'd like, you can cut relief notches instead of having these folds. However, that's just extra labor. So I just recommend leaving those extra bumps in the hem. We'll follow that same procedure for the other side as well. We've decided that the panel that wraps around the winch, we want the front edge to have approximately two inches of fabric hanging down over the bumper. So now on that fabric, we'll mark two inches up from that hemmed edge. This is where we'll start sewing the other panels to this main panel. On this panel three and four, Angela is marking a half inch over from that edge on the outside surface of those panels. So this is where she will join the main panel that wraps around the winch to this, the side panel. The main panel is on top and the side panel is underneath. So that edge that she just marked with the yellow grease pencil is flush with the edge of the main panel. And she starts it at that two inch location that she marked on the fabric. She's transferring that two inch mark to the top side of the fabric so that she can start that other side panel right at that location. Now simply sew right on top of that stitch line that created the hem along the main body panel, right on top of it. And as you do so, join up the yellow line so that it's flush with the hemmed edge of the main panel. As we come to the end, Angela will do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. One side has been secured to the main body panel. Now we just need to do the same procedure to the opposite side. 
to sew down the other side, Angela's going to work from the underside of the cover. So she flips the panels so the shiny side, which is the underside, is facing up. And she's going to use that half inch mark along this other side panel as well. However, it's probably not as necessary because you can just use the edges of the fabric and sew a half inch on the insides of the edges. So that's probably not necessary. And then she's going to start at that two inch location on the main body panel and sew this one to the top side. Because all we're having to do is match up the edge of the side panel with the hem on the other panel, that yellow line that she just marked on the side panels is not really necessary. We're going to show this in double time. All the panels have been joined together. Now we're ready just to finish off the front edge and to add webbing straps. We'll take that cover that we sewed together and place it on top of the winch. Then we'll pull that main body panel around from underneath and over top of the bumper to determine where to create the hem. We'll be placing that hem so that it's flush with the bottom edge of the cover on the sides. So we're marking it here with a silver Sharpie marker. We'll then sew that hem in place with the Sarat 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. Then we're going to create buckles with the YKK side release buckles. We're going to take some webbing and cut it to size with the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife. This seals the edge of the webbing to keep it from unraveling. Angela runs about a six inch piece of webbing through the female portion of the side release buckle and sews it to secure that webbing in place. Then she's going to sew it to the bottom edge of the main body panel. Because we want to keep this panel from flapping in the wind, we're going to secure these buckles very close to the corner. You notice Angela has reversed several times here and then she comes across to form what is, looks like a Z. She reverses here at the bottom portion of the Z as well. We'll also place a buckle on the opposite side of this flap. If you remember, when we placed this cover on top of the winch, the edge that wraps around to the front was flush with the two sides that are sewn on. So Angela's marking, matching it up so that it's even with those two sides. That way she can determine where the male portion of the buckle should be secured to the bottom portion of the main body panel. Angela uses that one inch polyester webbing and runs it through the male portion of the buckle. Then she creates a double fold on the end and takes it to the sewing machine and sews right in the center of this double fold. This will prevent the buckle from falling off of the end of the webbing when it's not secured. Then snap the male portion of the buckle to the female portion and determine where you want it to be sewed to the bottom portion of the main body panel that wraps around the winch. She's marked on the fabric and now she'll mark on top of the webbing and then she'll use the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife and cut the webbing to size. You want to create an exact duplicate for the other side. If you don't have a professional hot knife like this, you can use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. She'll then securely sew it to the cover at that location. She's going to use the Z-stitch to secure it in place. Reverse at the bottom, create a diagonal line and then reverse at the top edge. Will not show sewing on the other webbing strap. Here it is complete. We'll take off the strapping tape that was used for patterning on the winch and position this cover directly on top of the winch and determine what needs to be done for the belly strap. The belly strap goes from right side to the left side. To secure it in place, we'll 
take that bottom flap that hangs down low and tuck it underneath the panel and then use those side release buckles and snap them in position and then tension on the webbing. This secures the cover well indeed. However, a belly strap is also necessary to secure the sides of the cover. So Angela's taking a measurement from side to side to determine approximately how long to cut the webbing. On one of the sides, she's gonna secure the uh, female portion of the buckle, just as she did earlier when she secured the female portion to the front of the cover. Now we'll cut a piece of webbing, the length of the belly strap, plus about six inches with the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife to seal the edges. We'll then feed the webbing through the male portion of the buckle and create that stop on the end by creating a double fold and sewing down the center of the double fold. We'll then sew it in place on the opposite side of the cover. The Jeep winch cover is now complete, ready for installation over top of the winch. Utilizing the principles in this video should result in a cover for almost any application, whether it be a grill, or whether it be a binnacle cover for a sailboat, or whether it be a birdcage. Basically, the principles are all covered in this video. If you can pattern it, you can make it. And here, let's get a view of the belly strap underneath this winch cover. If you have questions about making a particular cover, be sure to give Sayerite a call. And be sure also to order all your supplies from Sayerite. Here's the material list and the tools that were used to make this cover. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out Sayerite.com or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.